Hi there honey bunnies, I have decided for the first time ever this year that I am going to attempt to do Vlogmas. I know I'm five days late coming into Vlogmas, um, but I kind of really felt last night a very strong urge to do Vlogmas. Um, the reason for that is that obviously my video making has waned quite a lot since the end of September. I'm still working, I'm still a full-time counsellor and card slinger, having a good time serving a clientele on a full-time basis and that's wonderful and I've got some really interesting projects that I'm working on for early next year and just thinking about what it is that I really want to offer. So I definitely haven't slowed down in the sense of what I'm actually producing and considering and thinking about but in terms of video content and also in terms of my presence on social media things definitely had to wind down after Self Love September and I'm kind of looking for a way to get back on the horse. I figure that Vlogmas might just gently push me in that direction and get me kind of making videos again more frequently and just I just want to get the ball rolling again basically. I miss you guys, I miss the comments, I miss the interaction, I miss finding out what you think about things and just spending time here in YouTube land. I definitely feel like um, you know I would like very much to just get back on that horse I suppose and I think Vlogmas might be a way to help me do that. Now all I'm planning on doing is making a video every day from now until the 25th of December. I'm not planning on talking specifically about Christmas stuff or Yule stuff although that probably will you know most likely come up and I'm not planning on taking you around and showing you the ins and outs of my life and what I'm doing and that kind of thing um, because that's not the kind of vlogging that I like to do. I really like to have a clear line in my own mind between what I talk about on the channel, what's relevant to the channel and then the rest of my life. So I'm definitely just going to be sitting down with a cup of tea of a morning and just shooting the shit about a topic, whatever I feel like talking about at the time. And today I don't think it will surprise many people to learn that the thing that's really most on my mind more than anything else is the victory that has been achieved at Standing Rock and just really me gathering my thoughts on that and, and really just coming to terms with some of the less positive things that I'm feeling about the whole situation and so I thought I would talk about that over a cup of tea, a cup of a cup of morning Earl Grey. Ah, oh. hmm. Can't say fairer than that shit, can you really? I can't remember when I first started reading about the situation regarding the Dakota Access Pipeline but it was quite a long time ago, it was quite a long while before the mainstream UK media got hold of the situation and really started to um, have a vested interest in the situation. So it was, it was months ago now and it actually led me down a really interesting avenue of learning a lot more about reservation life, learning a lot more about what um, past um, generations of First Nations peoples had to go through with their culture being robbed from them, forced integration into the American way of life, the boarding schools and that kind of thing. I read a lot about a lot of stuff that I didn't really know about before. Um, I read a lot more in depth about the Trail of Tears. I read a lot more in depth about the various different languages of First Nations peoples and the extent to which they've been able to keep those languages alive and keep people fluent in those languages and the problems that arose um, in relation to maintaining a grip on the heritage of languages um, due to you know the insistence upon integration and the forced integration boarding schools, children being beaten for speaking their native tongue and that kind of thing. Um, I learned about white clay, I watched a couple of documentaries on white clay and really just read a lot about it, read a lot of articles about it, read a lot about the legal process um, that was ongoing to try and stop new licensees from taking up residence in white clay, the problems with alcoholism um, and I really just dived into it in a way that I haven't before and it was really interesting. So the Standing Rock situation and kind of um, me wanting to keep abreast of it in the news and wanting to donate regularly to the legal fund and that kind of thing led me into led me down the rabbit hole basically and I was I thought a lot you know um, about about different different aspects of of the Native American journey and the issues that these people are facing and continue to face so it was really good for me in the sense that it made me really approach things I've not really thought about or looked into before. So I can't remember what time it was in the UK last night that um, the news started to flood in that the federal government had put a stop on the pipeline being placed under the Missouri River. For the moment, the pause button has been pressed. 
um, and this is a huge victory of course for the protesters at Standing Rock, a huge victory for the Lakota Sioux people, a huge victory, a huge victory for First Nations people and for Indigenous people in general I think. Um, it's huge, it's symbolic, it's pivotal and I'm really excited um, for them, I'm really excited for the people at the encampment, it must have been a fucking profound moment a really profound moment for that news to hit the encampment and um, I just think that's really awesome, I'm super happy for them. I do know as well at the same time that there is a lot of um, awareness that that this is now the time to remain super ultra vigilant, you know, this is the time when um, they're very much in danger of, of people letting go of the reins and telling themselves this fight is over. Especially, I think, because of the way that it's being reported by the media. I've noticed already since last night, I mean, I was online when the news started to come in, literally hot off the press. Like, I mean, as soon as it was announced that there had been a stop, um, that the federal government had stepped in, the, uh, the Army of Corps Engineers, I think, has stepped in and said that the pipeline can't go under the Missouri River, that they're going to have to start thinking about another way. Um, the, the news was just flooding in and obviously a lot of major news outlets who've picked up the story, I would say fairly recently comparatively to the news sources that I've been watching, uh, cobbled these stories together. They wanted to get this shit out. They wanted to, you know, to report it in real time. Um, and I looked at a lot of the headlines and a lot of the headlines kind of presented the appearance that the war has been won and that the, the pipeline won't go through, through tribal lands. And that's actually not what's happening. And, you know, I know that the, that the elders and a lot of the key protesters are very aware of that. And this is absolutely a time um, to remain super vigilant and to remember that and to bear that in mind, you know. Um, because unfortunately really what's gone on now is that there's there's got to be this whole other chunk to uh, this particular battle so the Obama administration has stepped up to its responsibility very fucking late in the game um, after the original pledge of you know of allegiance to to the First Nations peoples and to the people in Dakota in particular um, so the Obama administration has finally rocked up and said, OK, you know, the, the pipeline won't go under the Missouri River. Uh, there, won't, there can't be any danger of it poisoning the water source. It can't go through the tribal lands, etc. But now they need to have like um, a full impact environmental statement. And I believe that they need to get that from the Obama administration, from whatever faction of the Obama administration is responsible for producing that. They need to get it by January 20th, which is when Trump takes office. Um, Trump is in support of the Dakota Access Pipeline. We all know that he has investments in the Dakota Access Pipeline. The CEO of the company that are building the pipeline, Kelsey Warren, has, um, I've watched a few of the interviews that he's done with um, TV news outlets in the US, and he has very firmly and very confidently said that when Trump takes office, the pipeline will be built, that whatever, whatever they throw at the pipeline to stop it from getting built, as soon as Trump takes office, that motherfucker is going under the Missouri River, and that's it. He is, um, he is obnoxiously, egregiously confident about this um, and clearly has absolutely no thought for the bigger picture, no thought for the Lakota Sioux tribe, no, no conception of exactly what this is about and that this isn't just about this isn't just about any one thing, this is about humanity, this is about the planet, this is about unity for what's fucking right. Um, and whenever I see an interview with Kelsey Warren, I feel so angry and so stressed um, because he's so short-sighted and he's got his blinkers on and all he wants is to get that pipe built and that's it. And the shit that comes out of this man's mouth is unbelievable. But at the same time, I feel so desperately sorry for him. I just feel like there's a chip missing somehow and I can only feel sorry for someone like that. If you're not really sure what I'm talking about, if you don't know who Kelsey Warren is, then um, good for you. <laughs> you're probably having a lot more of a stress-free day than I am. And I'll leave a couple of interviews below, uh, a couple of segments from interviews below that I've seen that have really kind of shown me the nature of the attitude that we're dealing with and the individuals that we're dealing with here. I saw an incredible piece of footage the other day um, of a, uh, a, a Maori New Zealander doing a war dance um, at the border where they're trying to put the pipeline in. I thought there was something 
very fucking moving about that footage. I will leave it for you below so you can watch it. It's pff, it's fucking power. It's power to the max. It's just like uh, 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 it's just beautiful and watching indigenous people stand in solidarity with each other in that way is fucking sick. <laughs> I would never ever take the feeling of victory and the joy of victory away from the people at the camp right now. I would never say that people shouldn't celebrate. I think that it is a battle that has been won, but it's certainly not the war. I personally am afraid. I feel very, very frightened um, at the moment about this. I can't help thinking that it's a tinderbox. Um, I can't help thinking about what's going to happen on January 20th when Trump takes over. Um, I'm very scared about the increase of the use of brute force against protesters. I'm very scared that Trump is going to advocate some kind of fucking sweep and clear situation. Uh, there is a part of me that just wants to take all the money that I fucking own and get on a plane and go over there and just throw my fucking body in front of someone. Honestly, I, I'm, I feel very invested, very, very invested in this fight. I think it's a fight for all the right things. I think it's an honourable fight. I think it's a fight that many, many pagans feel hugely connected to for all kinds of reasons that I don't need to explain. Um, and I, and I, I'm very afraid. I have feelings of dread. This is not me saying that, you know, I'm, I'm precognitive and I'm predicting anything. I'm not trying to say I'm Nostradamus or anything like that. I'm not trying to make it my business to predict what is going to happen. I am saying as a human being, when I watch this celebration taking place and when I watch these people standing firm, knowing that they have to be vigilant for what's coming and knowing that they now have to keep the Obama administration held to account um, and knowing that even having said that, Trump has already spoken about wanting to enforce many laws that would break uh, with the Constitution already. Um, I feel afraid and I feel very flighty and I feel a bit sick about the whole thing. Um, so as much as I would never deny um, anybody the pleasure of, of, having, this, of having this victory dance, um, I just feel like there's such a long way to go. And it just seems just the little that I can do just seems like not enough. But I, I know that a lot of people feel that way about a lot of things. I think my boyfriend and I will make the decision this year that instead of purchasing presents for family members and things like that, we're going to take all of the money that we would have spent on vouchers and, and gifts and bits and pieces for our family and our friends, and we're going to instead make a more sizable donation to this cause. And then I think we're going to, um, you know, write in, in the Christmas cards to our family members that that's what we've done. And that is, you know, that's how we chose instead to spend the money and um, just kind of use that opportunity to, to let family and friends who might not know that much about the situation know about the situation, about what is going on and also to know that in a way they've already done something to help, you know, because we just took that money that we would have spent on, you know, the same material crap that, you know, you get every year for people. And I'm not saying it's not nice and I'm not saying it doesn't fill people with a warm glow. But for me, I think what could be better than taking money that you know you're going to spend on something that is, you know, expected and accepted and taken somewhat for granted and um, and send that money somewhere where you know it's got purpose and it's got meaning and it shows people so, so far away uh, facing a really harsh winter and facing a lot of difficult and very conflicted feelings about what is happening to their fucking land that you care and you're here and you see them and you love them and you stand with them. As far as I'm aware, um, from hearing it said a few times and reading it a few times, there is a firm belief that these things that are going on right now are part of a prophecy that the Lakota people have long been aware of and, and I believe like First Nations people have been aware of. Black Elk did say that the seventh generation would lead a pivotal fight 
um, for the planet and that there would be a black snake that would have to be like battled back and and stopped and the black snake would would threaten um, you know like land and humanity and indigenous people I'm not sure exactly about this prophecy but I've heard quite a few people that are part of the protest elders etc talking about this prophecy and I think it's the idea that it's based on prophecy that has been one of the things that has been so exciting so motivating and and, and so kind of passion inducing about this process and it certainly does seem like the black snake is the Dakota access pipeline right um, and, and it is the seventh generation now and I've seen yeah I've seen a few people from the Lakota Sioux tribe talking about that or writing about that and I think that's really really cool there is something very special about this moment in history there's something so fucked about it too though right <laughs> it's just yeah a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings and I'm sorry that I can't be of more help to people who also are feeling like me right now but I feel like sometimes we've all got to be a little bit bewildered together we've all got to hang on to our fucking hats together and we've all got to make ourselves another cup of tea this has been vlogmas days one to five much love and blessed be water is life water is life <laughs>